Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I decided to do a video for you guys about my C-section story. I had a C-section with Luke and also I had to get a C-section with Lana. I decided to do this video because I have a few friends and family members that are actually um, giving birth soon. A few of them I know um, it's their first child and some of them they're on their second or third but some of them are also going to experience having a c-section for the first time and as well as um, the other ones are their pros <laughs> but I actually went through it twice so I wanted to talk uh, talk about it a little bit today obviously my experience is always going to be different from any other mommy and everyone's body is different and how you handle pain and recovery is also different but um, the purpose of this video is just to tell you guys about my um, experience with both times that uh, I had to get a c-section so my first c-section with Luke was actually it had to be an emergency c-section I was in labor with him for almost 24 hours I was fully dilated um, the next day I went in at 9 o'clock um, the evening before um, which was Thursday evening and then um, she always wants to be with mommy. Her hair is a mess right now. So I went, so I went into labor, and then um, I was fully dilated by five or six p.m. the following day. So and then I started pushing around seven or eight p.m. and he just wasn't coming out. It took me like three hours. It was like eleven o'clock in the evening. I did end up having an epidural. In the end, the doctor decided that they wanted to try the forceps, which was a nightmare because when you're when the doctor tells you to start pushing, they kind of lower the dosage. If you, and if you have a, an epidural, they lower the dosage um, so that way you can start feeling the contractions and know when to push. So at that time, when when the end when the doctor, by the way, it wasn't my OBJ. OBGYN that delivered it. it was a totally different doctor that was on call before they gave me a boost on the epidural they decided to start going with the forceps and I felt everything and if this is TMI but this was my experience I think my body went into shock because <laughs> I couldn't stop shaking I was crying I was hysterical not on top of that because I was um, I was tired already from trying to push for three hours and then I just wanted him out. I got scared because I thought that he just wasn't going to come out. So they decided to do an emergency C-section. So they brought me into the operating room, got me ready and everything or whatever. So I, w I was already tired and groggy and then um, I, c I still couldn't stop shaking. My, all I remember is I was I couldn't stop shaking my arms. They had to strap my arms down. I told them to please strap my arms down because I feel like I can't. I just can't stop shaking. I, I just can't stop shaking. And so then it took maybe the whole initial procedure of taking the baby out was like in less than like ten minutes. I think besides the preparation and everything, they have to prep you. And so then um, he came out. He was healthy and. I felt nauseous and actually my husband was recording next to me and you could hear me in the background like gagging and trying to throw up I think from all the um, I don't know anxiety and just like the medication and they had to give me a little bit I'm, I'm sure it was like Demerol that they had to give me to make me a little drowsy and make me relax Luke came out, he was healthy, he was 7 pounds, 14 ounces, so he was a, for me, I'm a petite girl, so he was a, a pretty big baby. What's your matter, Munchie? Somebody turned 11 months yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you, girl. So anyways, so that happened and then um, putting me back together, 
um, that was difficult too because I feel I felt like that epidural was wearing off so I started panicking and I t started telling them like I could feel and like pushing really hard I guess because they have to pull your skin together or whatever and they ended up doing staples on me and I knocked out for maybe like 10 minutes it felt like an hour but then I woke back up and they were done with me rolled me into the recovery area I was in there for maybe at least two hours until because I was still groggy and as much as I wanted to hold Luke I couldn't because I was just knocking out I was just trying so hard to stay awake because of the medication anyway so I was in recovery they um, put me in the room um, finally and they had to when after you have an epidural or whatever or like any anesthesia on your back like obviously you have to wait until it wears off and then they put like these compression um, pillows around my um, legs so that way you know blood still circulates and since I can't get up and use the bathroom so I was I had a catheter you know standard <laughs> I guess procedures for any surgery or whatever um, so anyways and then recovery was hard because I was so swollen from all the IV and medications that I was on so it was really hard for me to get up and walk and um, or anything and it, every, and it was so traumatic on my body so everything was just swollen and my feet were like <laughs> this big it was just hard so I stayed there for like I think a total of five days because I didn't go home till like I think Wednesday or Tuesday so I was there in there um, Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday like six days almost like a whole week there I guess got home and yeah recovery was really hard the first time I mean luckily everything went well everything um, Luke had a little bit of jaundice and they had to put him under the Billy Rubin light and also um, they gave, gave us like a Billy blanket uh, like it looks like this long band that you wrap around the baby and then you turn it on and they're supposed to wear it for a while he didn't like that so that's what happened with my first um, c-section and so then the second time around Lana where are my notes can you bring me my notes please after after that horrific experience the second time around I expected it to be kind of not I mean hopefully not as traumatic I had to have a scheduled c-section with Lana normal delivery date is September 5th so when they do a c-section has to be a week prior your um, due date so official scheduled c-section date was August 29th which was what they scheduled me for I ended up giving birth to her August 17th because the week before I gave birth for a week before August 17th I started having contractions and they wouldn't go away they were mild but um, they kept coming so they decided and she was 36 I was 36 weeks pregnant at that time and they want you to be at least uh, 37 I think 36 37 yeah they want you at least 37 weeks they wanted her in my belly as long as possible which is understandable because then they can develop their lungs can develop um, much better and they won't have a hard time breathing or have any other health complications when they come out so they gave me a shot in the arm to stop the contractions which was really weird because it made me feel like relaxed a little bit but then it made me feel like anxious it was just a weird weird feeling and then they said okay if it happens again within the next week or so then just come back and then we'll do the emergency c-section so I said okay so then exactly a week later um, I started having the contractions again early in the morning and then at that time um, my husband was going to school so he could miss class because it just started so I told him I was having contractions in the morning I said just um, just go you know just go tell your teacher I think he was a week in or like he was already a week in or two um, with his class Lana Lana's trying to anyways so his teacher was very understanding and luckily <laughs> my husband <laughs> stop and so luckily my husband was able to be with me I checked in at four o'clock in the morning and I I knew 
you weren't allowed to eat if anything were to happen so I just grabbed the pastry and that was the only thing I I honestly had and they said okay well if your contractions don't stop then we'll try to schedule you in the schedule today because you know obviously there's other women there that have scheduled c-section that had scheduled um, surgeries so by the time I was admitted from 4 a.m. until they were able to tell me that the doctor was going to do the emergency c-section on me it was already like 12 o'clock in the afternoon so I was they didn't give me anything for the contractions I was just kind of writing it out and luckily it didn't really get too bad um, too bad by the time uh, it was time for me to have the c-section so it's really different when you have a scheduled c-section because you go into the operating room well the way how the hospital I had I had the c-section in two separate hospitals so this hospital that I was having Lana at they take you to the operating room and then they sit you on the table and then um, the anesthesiologist gives you shots in the back when you're having c-section it's different than it's kind of like as if they're preparing you for an epidural when they give you the shot in the back but instead they give you enough numbing stuff which is oh man that's like the worst feeling ever I think it hurt more feeling the medication go in my back than because it gives you like a little twinge oh it was just a horrible feeling I hated it I started crying um, because of the sensation of it is just uh, and then so the anesthesiologist he was really nice very um helpful and um he was excellent so he gave me the shots in the back i had to lie down and then all of a sudden you just feel extra extra numb and i started panicking a little bit because it's kind of like oh you feel trapped but you like you can't move part of your body it was just i tried to calm down because I kept telling myself it's okay it's okay because it's gonna go away soon let's just you know get through this and one part I what I didn't like throughout my experience is because there was a lot of trainees I hate it when if I would have known I should have opened my mouth and said I don't want any newbies or whoever you're training just like get this done quick but this nurse she was training another nurse telling me how to do that telling her you know do this or how to do that and it kind of prolonged my preparation because they had to prepare me and then finally um, during this time Carlos was sitting my husband he was sitting outside and waiting for them to let him in after um, while they were preparing me so after they put up the drapes they put this like big blue drape over your you know you're laying down and probably from here <laughs> You know, you can't see anything because they're working, they're going to be working on you. And then finally my husband came in and then the doctors finally started working on me. And then Lana came out. My husband was able to um, cut her umbilical cord. So um, then I started shaking again. I had this thing where like, I don't know if it's a medication, like I just start shaking. So I took the anesthesia anesthesiologist and I said my arms are shaking you have anything like I'm starting to like you know shake I feel cold or you know I was having this sensation so he said okay so he gave me Demerol again like the first time with Luke and it did relax me enough to where I was able to get through the surgery so this time I got stitches instead and they said that the scar tissue it was like much longer than it needed to be so they removed some old scar tissue and now my incision was much smaller and much cleaner like it was I was really really happy with the incision after it like everything healed and they actually stitched me up instead so I was really happy with that and my recovery was much faster I was able to walk and stand up I think the next day or because they make you they make you stand up and go use the bathroom and you know get everything going and um, the worst part of it was actually after <laughs> again after <laughs> yeah no don't touch it Lana stop touching it um, 
my OBGYN was the one that was supposed to do my scheduled um, C-section, but since it was an emergency, it had to be the doctor that was on call. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that week, my doc my doctor was on vacation. He was out of town even, so he, it wasn't even like he could come and um, do the surgery. So anyway, so I got stitches, and then the only thing that I didn't like is these bandages that were like super sticky, had, I don't know what kind of, felt like super glue that they stuck on me. Which didn't happen the first time. I think they just put like tape, medical tape over the incision. But this was like a huge band that they stuck on my skin. And, um, Lana, come here. And they had to, and they had to remove that band the day of, or the day before, um, I was being released. <coughs> yeah, I know. And it just sucked because it felt like a huge band-aid like you're ripping off like it doesn't make any sense because you have an incision there and ripping off something on your stomach it's, I don't know and the glue or whatever it's it was stuck on my skin for like three weeks I kid you not nothing would nothing would help take it off no oil no alcohol nothing I I didn't know what to do I was just like man whatever but it was like it was gross you know how when you take off a band-aid and that like the glue or whatever the sticky stuff still on your skin and then it turns like dark because of I don't know everything that you're rubbing on <laughs> that's how it was like on the side of my stomach but anyways my recovery was much easier with um with Lana because also I was not swollen be because of all the medication or whatever that was inside of me the first time so my feet were not swollen I was good I was able to get up and use the bathroom still a little hard but um I needed some help also um I forgot to tell you like yeah the first 24 hours after um I was in recovery after um after the surgery I was I just kept throwing up I couldn't hold anything down not even water not nothing so the because of the medication I guess so I was not able to eat anything until the next day, which really sucked because I was so hungry, but then like I couldn't hold anything down. <laughs> Hi, Lana. So, of course, I wanted to eat everything. And then also when your incision heals, when um, that area heals, actually you lose like a little bit of sensation, like you can't feel anything like around the incision, which is weird because you're like, oh, somebody's tired. Because you're like scratching trying to scratch your skin but then like you don't feel anything it was it's really it's really weird but anyways so obviously my experience is different than anybody else's experience maybe somebody else and other hospitals too I had them at two different hospitals so each hospital has different procedures but always you know if you have a birth plan stick to it if you have a scheduled c-section make sure you know there's a few things that I can recommend make sure you tell them you don't want any trainees make sure you know no nurse is there trying to train somebody else trying to show them how to do this because you just want to get in and get out of there you know not prolong anything and then also you want to make sure you want to ask your doctor um, that's going to be doing the procedure how are they going to um, and close um, how are they going to close the incision are they going to do staples or are they going to do stitches um, also what I recommend at your hospital most hospitals have is this little stretchy um, oh, my name sucks, Lana. stretchy belly band I got one at the first hospital with Luke and then I got this one also they gave it to me when at the other hospital so it has a velcro and it goes around your belly and you just you know one size fits all but it really helps you to feel um, to walk and to get up and um, you know it just makes it easier with your incision so I still have this one I know I'm not gonna need anymore cuz I ain't plan to have any more kids or at least we're not hopefully not and then also another good thing is I, I was so happy that I brought this if you're breastfeeding bring a boppy pillow because this helps a lot when you're um breastfeeding your baby uh, or feeding your baby and holding them and just it makes it easier on your back so you're not so lean forward and much better than put, you know putting like a big old pillow hospital pillow in front of you and this one with a boppy pillow it just hugs around your waist and then you're it's easier for you to 
hold the baby. And another thing is, if you're having a scheduled C-section, make sure you have a family member or a friend stay with you. Very important because it's going to be very difficult when at, in the middle of the night, um, the baby is waking up and crying and your son not fully able to get up yourself, get up and pick up the baby. Um, I know many moms who have given birth naturally, um, they're able to get up right away after, you know, but with a mom C-section, a mommy that has a C-section, it's much more difficult to get up and, you know, get, um, pick up the baby. And I know that you're able to either buzz the nurse so that they can help you or, you know, have a, your family friend or your partner or significant other, whoever is there with you to help you with the baby. And, um... My husband was able to stay with me uh, both times and I know he was so exhausted <laughs> with me. I'm so grateful and thankful for him to be with me but at times I have to tell you it was hard for him to wake up because um, he was just so exhausted and I feel so bad for him and um, you know when I have to help, have him help me with the baby. But anyway, so that's very important. And also, I know right after um, you have your C-section, make sure you eat something light, like a soup or something easy to, di to, di to digest because you don't want anything that's going to have a hard time in your stomach. Like, don't think about going to Tommy's and getting some chili cheese dog or whatever and fries because that is going to hurt you when you're trying to go number two. The nurses do give you a stool softener and then, um, or sometimes they give you a laxative to help you go to the bathroom because they want you to go to the bathroom. Make sure you're able to go to the bathroom before you leave. Uh, they want to make sure that you're able to go to the bathroom normally and everything's good before you're discharged. When you are going home, um, I find it easier if you're able to sleep in the rocking chair or in a, in a big sofa chair or even prop up some pillows when you're sleeping if you're able to because it is difficult to lay down on your side or even I know you want to lay down on your back because it's been like months before you have been able to lay on your back anymore you used to laying on your side um, because it's hard to you know get up you never realize like how much you know we take for granted our the muscles in our stomach or in our abs to even get up or bend over it's crazy so you want to make sure you're as comfortable as possible and um, that you're not gonna hurt yourself even more and I was lucky enough that when after I came home with Lana um, my mom was able to watch Luke so I didn't have to worry about Luke at all in the mornings or whatever it was just me and Lana, all I had to do was worry about her. So that also helps if you have somebody that is going to stay with you if you have multiple kids. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. And if you're nervous, if you're a first time mom, don't be, just try not to think of, you know, just try not to think too far ahead. You know, just think about your precious baby. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard mentally, physically, emotionally. Just always remembering, you know, you can do it. You've gone this far. You're almost there. Hang in there. And always ask for um, support wherever you can get it. And always remember, um, also other moms, you're doing a great job. You're doing awesome. Us mommies, we need a lot of support from each other. So just know that you are doing amazing. Keep going. Ask me any questions. Maybe I'm able to answer them or maybe other mommies that watch this video may be able, may be able to answer it for you. So uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my birth story, my C-section story. And I hope I didn't leave anything out. I was able to actually vlog a little bit today so hopefully I'll be able to get this video and also my vlog video um, up on the channel for you guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!